Hi everyone, uh, today we're going to talk about how to create a mineral moon. I got asked this question when I posted a picture of uh, the January mineral moon uh, last month. So I thought it would be a good topic uh, for a video to show my workflow. There are obviously many ways to do this. Uh, I'm going to be talking about how to create it from uh, the output of a mono camera, so uh, black and white to colour rather than from an OSC colour camera. So the first thing you have to do obviously is capture your video. Uh, I'm using an ASI 1600mm uh, Pro uh, and uh, you need to capture you know, a few hundred frames of video. I I'm not a specialist uh, when it comes to planetary or lunar photography. Uh, I tend to shoot the moon just because it's there and I'm waiting for something else to uh, to rise up uh, above the trees um, but I do like to capture the moon just uh, for the fun of it it is uh, a beautiful object when it's not uh, interfering with deep sky imaging um, so it is quite nice to be able to capture these these pictures and um, create nice color images of the moon uh, so obviously you shoot the moon and, and capture video through the um, red, green and blue filters. So this is an example of um, raw footage uh, taken uh, with the ASI Air Pro that's capable of doing video capture and the ASI 1600mm Pro um, using Sharpstar 94EDBH triplet scope. Um, which has a, a, a focal length of 410 millimeters, so it fits the full frame of the moon quite nicely um, into its field of view. So you're not going to get particularly detailed pictures of the moon, but you can get get the full disk of it. Um, so you can do your processing based on uh, this this uh, video if you want. Um, it, it does depend upon your tracking and how, how good your tracking is. Sometimes I forget to change it from sidereal to, to lunar. That doesn't always make much of a difference, but sometimes I find that uh, by the time I've shot uh, uh, the, 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 the last filter, that maybe the moon has drifted slightly. Um, it could be that it's been a little, a few minutes between the first capture and the, the, the last capture because sometimes clouds are drifting by. Um, or for whatever reason, I find I end up with three stacked images where they don't actually align. Uh, so one way you can deal with this is to use PIP, which if you're familiar with planetary um, astrophotography or imaging, uh, you'll be aware of. So what PIP can do is take a video like this uh, and it can center the object um, in, in your video. So if I add uh, so one of these videos, you can do it as a batch job, so load all three red, green and blue at the same time, um, select it as batch mode, optimize it for planetary. Um, I'm only going to do the one here um, and you, I, you can go through the options. I don't need to debayer this as it's black and white. Uh, processing uh, objects because I already said it, said it was planetary um, it's enabled object detection so you can check that that's working you can see it is um, you can then change the size the frame size so this is 1920 by 1080 so um, if I wanted to center it on a slightly smaller uh, video I could set it to a thousand by a thousand for example Quality options, um, I'm not that fussed about that here because um, I've only got 400 frames and actually there was pretty good uh, seeing conditions when I shot this so I'm not that worried about quality but um, if you were doing planet planet, uh, and uh, you're, you're more, it's more susceptible to um, the seeing conditions you might want to just select um, the, the best quality frames. Uh, output AVI and then do processing. So uh, once you've done that, what it's going to do is read through all of the, the frames of the um, video and it will create a new video, um, a thousand by a thousand with the moon centered in it. Um, and it's already creating a folder here uh, and in a second there will be 
um, a new AVI file which is here and now we have um, uh, a new video where the moon is in the centre uh, and then you can run do the same for the red and green filters and then you can use these to, to stack um, to create your image files for um, RGB combine um, so to do the stacking I'm using auto stack at 3 um, I tend to I also have auto stack at 2 sometimes it gives better results um, so I tend to do it in both and then choose which one's giving me the better result so here if you haven't done this before um, you just um, go and find your uh, video which it's lost its place so I need to go and find it so moon and here so what I can do is select the video actually I want the pip video so that's this one open the pip video there it is uh, you can put some anchor points on around uh, the moon you want to get a fair few you can do you can do an AP grid which will absolutely cover the um, surface of the disk with anchor points but you don't need that many um, I tend to go for about 30 um, ish and then you can analyze and it will go through and uh, analyze the uh, the moon and the quality of the images and then you're ready to do your stacking um, so once it's finished this analysis it will give you a quality graph um, as well and uh, you can then choose the frame percentage to stack um, so I've, chose, I've got 75 percent here um, do a little bit of normalizationing, a little bit of sharpening, and you can have the you can either drizzle off um, or you can drizzle 1.5 or 3.0. I've actually found that 3.0 works quite well with the data I get from this telescope. Um, so I'm going to stack 3.0. It also gives you a larger image to work with. So I'm just going to then stack that, um, and it will run through in the background and do its do its stacking um, which is normally quite quick so in this folder where the uh, where the video is it'll output um, a, a folder and this is where I'll write out the the TIFF files so it's almost done now uh, and it'll output two TIFF files drizzle30.tiff and drizzle30 underscore comv.tiff um, this is the sharpened one the comv um, that's the one I'm going to use uh, for RGB combine so here is my stacked image uh, and obviously you do the same for the red and the green and then you're in a position to start creating your mineral moon um, image so you can create the mineral moon in Photoshop by importing the three um, stacked images, converting one to be a color image and then copying and pasting the other two into their respective channels. Um, I prefer to use, uh, just get this out of the way, uh, Astro Pixel Processor uh, simply because it has an RGB combine tool um, which is quite uh, useful and easy uh, easy to do. So here, here are my three TIFF files um, from AutoStackert, uh, so you've got red, green, and blue. I've converted them into FITS files. You don't need to do this, um, but it just works quicker um, uh, for the demo purposes to use um, the, the the FITS file formats. Um, so when you open up, they, they look hideous like this. This is just um, because uh, it sets things incorrectly for the moon. Um, if I increase this slider over then you start to see um, what's actually there um, so uh, this is obviously the the blue mono and now to do the 
uh, RGB combine, I go into uh, the combine RGB. Um, if it's not already selected, select RGB2 multiply scale. Uh, and then you add your three channels. So um, if I open, that's blue. Add channel green. And add channel red. So I'm going to turn the or leave the auto on there, um, and I'll do a recalculation. And again, you get the same hideous overexposure. So take the slider across. For me, for this image, I found about forty thousand is is good enough. Um, so you can start to see the features of the moon. Uh, I can turn on the saturation, and you can start to see some colours coming through. Now I can turn up the saturation and they'll get much stronger. So you can you can now really see the see the colours. So you can play around with the tabs, um, try and get the colours where you might like them. Um, you can obviously play around with the uh, various sliders down here, sharpen it up, look, you know, add a bit of contrast. Um, the blue channel on my data was the sharpest data and I didn't shoot any luminance so I'm going to use the blue uh, as the luminance and just turn it up a little bit um, and if I do the slider over here I have to click recalculate um, and then redo this back to 40ish you can actually turn the auto off um, but it's now a bit sharper than it was um, play around with the luminance that's probably a little bit too much I'm starting to lose the the, the redder colors um, give it another go so so this is now already looking uh, pretty reasonable uh, I can then output this as a tiff and do final adjustments in uh, Photoshop so this is the latest beta version you click Save um, you just select TIFF 16-bit sRGB v4 and then click OK and uh, it'll save it as a TIFF file um, you can then go into Photoshop and uh, load your TIFF files this is one I prepared earlier um, straight out of Astro Pixel processor it's got some of the stacking artifacts in here so I'm just gonna um, crop those away be a little bit careful not to crop the moon out of the picture Let's pull it down a bit and center it so I think that's okay um, so you can now do your adjustments on this if you wanted to obviously I don't have a lot of space around the moon now um, so what you can do is uh, create a larger image and cut and paste this into it but I'll, I'll do that at the end um, so you can you can play around with your colors uh, now um, I, I find myself spending quite a lot of time tinkering uh, with these and obviously Photoshop has many tools uh, to do it um, just for expediency I'm just going to auto color it and that's brought out some of the the reds um, it's maybe made the whites a bit too white um, so I can take those back a little bit in uh, camera raw um, just pull it down a little bit maybe increase the clarity a touch update the increase the saturation and the vibrance um, maybe that's a little bit too much um, and then OK that. Uh, I can then adjust the color balance. Maybe move it a little bit towards the blue. A bit of purple or magenta. A little bit of cyan. So you've got something you like. I mean, that there's lots of tools for adjusting these colours. 
um, and then I can just make it onto a bigger palette by creating a new 5000 by 4000 black background, create that, uh, and then copy and paste this, control A, control copy, and put it into here. And I've now got a picture of the moon sitting in black space. Um, and you know it, it's looking pretty good but you can go in you can adjust the colors adjust the sharpening contrast until you get it just the way you want it um, but hopefully what that's shown is how you can use the RGB tool in um, Astro Pixel Processor um, uh, quite effectively to create your initial moon image before importing it into Photoshop and it just takes some of the work out of it so hopefully that's useful. Um, let me know in the comments below uh, or if you've got any suggestions for how I could do it better or quicker. I'm always happy to learn something new myself. Um, uh, hope that's useful. Clear skies all.